Uluwa Jeff. Uluwa Jeff it is, yeah. Um, okay, we'll just get into it. Ooh, look at him. He's smiling. Look at the yeah, smile. He sees the dollar sign. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff St. Lance, Lance Kusev. Like and subscribe. Clickbait. Sorry. So you're taking on Marvin Vittori again for the second time. Uh, How did this fight come to fruition? I don't know. If you're ranked number six and then you beat a guy that's ranked number 10, then you jump to number three. MMA math. Yeah, um, well, the initial guy we wanted to fight was Robert Whitaker, but he doesn't feel like fighting right now because of other reasons. So, yeah, Marvin stepped up. They were both saying October, one was saying September, and I was like, look, I'm fighting in June. Who the f wants it? And Marvin stepped up, so yeah, I like to be an active champion, and I guess he likes to get actively beat again. Why do you like to be active champion? Because this game, I don't have long in this game. I want to fight as much as I can while I still can. You never know. Like, I fought over 100 fights in my career, so yeah, I, I realize, even though I look young, edit this bit, edit this bit, ching, and then even though I look young and I am, um, you know, I'm kind of like in the stride of my prime right now, I still feel I want to leave the game before the game leaves me. So, yeah, while I'm here, while I'm hot, while I'm fresh, stay fighting. I don't want to just sit down and, because I mean, one said, like I said, I think it was Rob that said September and then Homeboy said um, October. I was like, bro, I just fought in March. I'm trying to fight in June. You know, these guys, they're not, we're not the same. We're not built the same. How do you bounce back after a fight, um, your last fight? You know, you didn't get the, the double belt. How do, you bounce, mm -hmm. how do you bounce back to a... No, I just do what I do. I mean, that last fight I was trying to win. I was trying to knock him out a bit too aggressively. And he uh, took me down with swift veteranism. Veteranism? Is that a word? But yeah, uh, how do I bounce back? How do I bounce back? I don't, I don't know if I have to bounce back. I don't really feel like I lost a step. I don't really feel like anything, you know, it was just lessons I learned from that fight that I've implemented in this camp. I feel like they're working. I've changed some things, you know, um, but bouncing back, I don't, I don't know if I feel like I need to bounce back. Like the stock didn't really take a huge dip. So it's not like, oh my God. And also we're not done. Like that was just one attempt. Um, yeah. Story still goes on. See, I think you have, I think I looked up, an 87% takedown defense. Some What's that, that say that everyone just thinks that you can just take you down now? Try. I mean, it's not like I've had how many fights in the UFC, and it's not like every person has tried to take me down. So, yeah, if suddenly now you think, oh, that's all you need to do. It's like, okay, cool. Try. What do you expect with this upcoming fight? Like, what kind of fight do you expect? I expect them to do just that, to try and wrestle from the get-go and do takedowns, shoot from my crotch. So I'm just gonna press my balls on the back of his head as I sprawl, flatten him out on the mat while he eats dirt. Yeah. You're fighting in the same exact arena that you already fought him in originally. Deja vu. Huh, isn't that interesting? Theo might be there and Jenna will be there who were also there last time. You weren't there. I'm glad you're not gonna be there. You fucking jinx me up. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, uh, it's just weird. I don't know. I don't really. I haven't really thought much about that, to be honest. But it's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, same arena, same result. How about fighting in front of fans? You now fought your last two fights without fans. Kind of hit the rawness of it on the dark web kind of thing that you mentioned. How is it to motivate you to be in front of fans again? I know you spoke about watching Kamaru Usman's fight and how the roar of the crowd and shit like that was uh, pretty motivating to you. Uh, don't cut that bit, that's fucking gold. I farted, leave it in. Don't, if you cut that bit out, I'm deleting the vote, everything. Don't cut that bit out, that's golden. That was perfect. Sorry, <laughs> Even with his laugh in the background. <laughs> that was perfect. Um, fans, well, 
I've kind of enjoyed not having the fans, but at the same time, I say it's a double-edged sword because there's a point when I drop someone or rock someone or knock someone out that people just go crazy and I ride that wave. Or even when they're silent, like a whole arena of people silent. I like that because then I've done that many times in China. Silence a whole arena and it's just like, yes. Yeah, there's something powerful about that. But um, Yeah, I do miss them by the same time I don't. Like you see what's happening right now in the NBA. It's kind of stupid and pisses me off. Like these guys, that someone threw a bottle at Kyrie Irving. I think it had water in it. It just missed him. If it had hit him and made him like cut him, I don't think these people think. What if it was a can? He had like a train. Choo choo! Um, what if, yeah, what if like the, it was a Bud Light can or something, a Coke can, and you threw it at him and then it hit him in the head, cut him, gave him concussion, you know? Yeah, arrest these guys, but I feel like start charging them. The other one was popcorn, whatever, yeah, but still, make them pay because what these guys now, they're, they're starting to do it for clout, feels like, feels stupid. So I feel like charge them, like, make it like mandatory f three years in the slammer. Yeah, then maybe you'll see who would want to do that again at the show. So, yeah, I see shit like that and it's just like, oh, f Makes me just not like them. But then also, like I said, I like the fact that when I see Thug Rose drop Homegirl and the whole place erupts, I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to do that feeling and ride that wave. So, yeah, it's a double-edged sword, but I don't really care. I'm just there for me. Myself and I. Um, you look at the top five. You pretty much cleared out the division. Is this like, are we just on? Uh, are we just starting to lap people now? What Run at the Sonia, bruv. Run at the Sonia. I'm just running laps around the division again. Oh my God, look at me running. Yes, yeah, what I do. Run at the Sonia. So I'm just gonna run, run laps, victory laps. So what's left? In, what's left to do in the division? Do it again. Do what I already did the first time. Just do it again, and then do what I attempted to do in my last fight. Yeah. So you're not done with that idea? Hell no. It's gonna happen. But yeah, um, I just accept things the way they are and the things that I can control. Me. How do you like your, uh, your co-workers on the card? We got the three oh, yeah. the Figueroa. This is a stat card. I love it. This is a stat card. Um, what's some baby assassin's name again? Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. Yeah. I love that fight. The first fight was beautiful. I might even watch it again just to get jazzed up for it. I like the Diaz versus Edwards fight. That's that's a sick fight. Um, and I know I should check. I remember who was on the prelims, but I forgot. I remember looking at the list and I was like, ooh, that's juicy. But yeah, card is stacked though. And who's your favorite photographer? Jeff Batari. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>